So, there's something quite concerning I want to talk about that has come to my attention. On the back end of YouTube, you can see what other videos are recommending your video. And as I was browsing through my analytics, it has come to my attention that there is a video recommending my most recent video called Why Guitar Players Choose Squire. Very interesting because I think it speaks to a deeper problem that we're seeing in the guitar world as guitars are getting more and more expensive. They're really pushing this narrative that squires are the future because so many new guitar players are getting priced out of just a decent regular guitar like American performer or whatever the base model Gibson is which those are not great guitars in my opinion you might love them not for me I do not want one of those I think it speaks to the fact that guitar players do not understand how much they're actually being marketed to right so one thing that as somebody who's done a lot of marketing for artists and I studied marketing at Berklee College of Music I sort of just understand marketing is happening all the time so when you see these really great guitar players like I think the narrative is like there's this great session guitar player in Nashville and he only plays Epiphone and Squire and blah 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 yada 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 that is a narrative being pushed by these companies that you need to consider these cheaper models because you're not gonna get a Mexican Strat for your first guitar I think the one example actually there's a few examples I do have some uh, Mexican fenders that are going for outrageous money I have a 60th anniversary Jazzmaster with the matching headstock, and the price on those is outrageous. I think they're going for around two grand. I saw one the other day at Guitar Center for like 1,800 bucks. It was used. $1,800 used Mexican Jazzmaster. What is going on? Like. These prices are outrageous because I remember my first guitar, my first electric guitar, was a Mexican Fender Strat in gunmetal blue. Oh, I wish I still had that guitar. It was $300 in 2005 or 2006, whenever, whenever I started playing. 300 bucks. That's a great first guitar. That's an awesome price. That guitar took me a long way. I loved playing that guitar. It wasn't long after, though, that I started getting more guitars. I, I started getting into Japanese Fender. I got my first really good Japanese Strat, a Antigua Strat, and that was 600 bucks. I think now those Japanese Antiguas are going for, like, 15, 1600 bucks too. That is crazy to me. It's actually a really cool guitar. Uh, Jason Isbell, he's awesome. Love his music. He's got an insane guitar collection. I wish I could just hang out with him for the day and play some of those guitars. They're incredible. He has his own a signature series, Telecaster, and it's really cool. I think it's like 1500 bucks though. Uh, after tax, I mean, 16, 1700 bucks, depending on where you live. That's, that's a lot for a Mexican Telecaster, right? And so this narrative is emerging that now what is replacing the Mexican Fender line is Squire. And so that is like the new entry point for guitar players. And to me, that just... It feels outrageous, and I know that I'm being marketed to 
as well when I see these videos online like, oh, uh, why, why do guitar players choose Squire? Well, the best session guy in Nashville only plays Squire because he's great. You should have a Squire. And they almost got me. There is a very cool Squire bass. I think it's called the Rascal. It's sweet. Matching headstock, Sherwood green, sick. And the Squire logo doesn't look bad. It's got that gold lettering Squire. I mean, it looks very cool. It's got the wide range humbuckers, which in a bass, awesome. And if you know anything about the Rascal bass, the original Rascal bass, which was a Fender, actually had lipstick style pickups like the Dane Electro, which is also cool, but arguably I would say the wide range humbuckers are far cooler in my opinion. And uh, the fact that I almost bought that Squire says a lot about the marketing behind it and the machine that is pushing this narrative and you know I kind of think I feel like that's kind of a tragedy right because if you've played a squire they really they're not good the frets are rough the wood is rough I think the biggest disservice to guitar players that Fender has done is like these laurel fretboards, palfaro fretboards, that shit is garbage. And on my $1,800 Mexican Jazzmaster, and I also have a Jaguar, which is also Mexican, those are going for a lot of money as well, too. I think about two grand for the model I have, which originally when it was put out, think they were originally a thousand dollars and that was a little steep in in like 2015 16 and that was when they started pushing these to me I thought that was a really high-end Mexican and obviously not I, I guess the fucking ceiling on this shit is just to infinity and beyond I think guitar players need to be careful about like how much we buy into this marketing because music man is out here and they're offering a good guitar with rosewood for you know 600 bucks gnl you can get a comanche for 700 dollars with rosewood i'll take that any day over a pal ferro fretboard 1600 dollar mexican strat just something to think about all right We'll